We're blessed. We're blessed to be here. We're blessed to, to be together. We're blessed to have another day where we can try and change and work on ourselves because that's the purpose of life. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's the purpose of life um, or one of the major purposes of life as the Gra says in the beginning of Evan Shlema that uh, a person is, is his opening is opening the Likud, the Malake, the, the one who compiled the Gra. So he starts off by saying that, that a person is here in this world to be Mesakin himself, to fix himself. Imlav Lama Lichayim. What else do we think that, that life is about? A lot of times we, we think that life is about uh, enjoyment and uh, fulfilling one's, one's uh, desires mm -hmm. and you know, living a certain way. And, and like I say many times, um, of course, it's, it's important for a person to, to be comfortable. It's important for a person to have money and to you know, live a life uh, where, he, where he can try and uh, have stability in a gosh for Gashmias, but that's not the purpose of life. It's not the purpose. What happens is we get, we think that the purpose is to make money. The purpose is to have a nice house. The purpose is to live comfortably. That's not the purpose. That, that's not the reason Hashem didn't put us down in this world for 70, 80, 90 years, however long a person is on this world. Halavai. Shivim Shanam Vim Guru Shmanim Shana. Thank you so much. Right? Halavai. A person lives a long life. But that's not the purpose. That's not why Hashem took your neshama out of the highest place that it can imagine and put you down this world so you could, so you could have money in the bank and drive a Tesla. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So you, could, so you could enjoy, so you could go on vacation. That, that, that wasn't the purpose of Hashem putting us in this world. Hashem put us in this world for a much deeper reason. One of those things is that we're in a world of... of of challenges and and nisyonos and to and to be masakin to fix yourself, um, which I'll just say as uh, uh, the the shir is liiloi nishmas my father today's his yard site, Rabbi Mordechai ben Rav Zev Yehuda v'chana, so it should be alias neshama for him. Thank you. Um, the, the, the point, again, the point is, is that we're here for a limited time. Every one of us is here for a limited time. And, and the, most, the most important thing is to remember, to try and remember why it is that we are here on this world. And the Sahara, of course, makes us distracted. Like we've said many times, the Sahara is like a fly. And a fly, right, the Gemara Chazal compare the Sahara to a zvuv, to a fly. And a fly just gets you distracted from what you're doing. You want to focus, and it gets you distracted. And what does it distract you? It distracts you from, from really your purpose. That's why people get upset when, they're, when they struggle. They get upset when they're going through a hard time because it's like, oh, um, things are supposed to be comfortable. Things are supposed well, who's, where's, who says that? It's not supposed to be easy. Right? Why, who says that life is supposed to be easy? Life is not supposed to be easy. Life is supposed to be Right? Something that you, that you fix yourself, that you work on yourself, that you try and better yourself. That's, that's the avod, to better yourself. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with going on vacation. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with having enjoyment. Right? The, but the pshat is, is that, is that not to forget what the ikar is, what's the main thing, and what's the not the main thing. Like the Ramchal, like the Basil Sharm says in Atzlus, the line that he says that I always quote, um, when a person being, being acquiring, being a productive person, he says, is bakashas ha-menucha ha-gufnes. Is that ha-gadol shabakulam, in the beginning of the ninth parak, he says the, the, the main thing that pulls a person away from, from doing things is I want to just be relaxed. I want... Right? Like, like when you get out of bed, getting out of bed, right? When you expect getting out of bed to be easy, then you're in big trouble. If you think getting out of bed in the morning is going to be easy, so then every time it's hard, you're like, wait, why is it hard? But, 
But if I say, no, it's going to be hard to get out of bed, but I got to do it anyway. I was actually just, um, um, uh, yesterday, I went to a friend, um, a friend of mine, uh, Rabbi Tawil knows him also, Rabbi Zimmerman. I went together with Rabbi Zimmerman in a few chevra that, uh, that he lost his daughter, um, Hashem Yerachem, Rachman Litzlan, um, and the yard site was yesterday. Um, Glenn Holman, Zelig Holman, a good friend of ours, um, and he was telling me, he was telling me at the Levaya, his, 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 he, Hashem Yerachem, he lost two daughters. This was his second daughter, um, you know, the, you know Glenn. So uh, Miriam, and he was telling me um, that, that um, I'll just say a story, it should be a Leos Neshama for her. Um, Miriam Bas uh, Zelig Shol, um, and he told me a crazy story uh, where, where he, when he was maspid, when he was eulogizing his daughter, she was 21 years old. Uh, she was healthy growing up, and then something happened. She, um, and, and she got sick, and she passed away at 21 years old. And, and at the Levaya, so Zelig, Glenn was telling me, someone asked him, how did you have the strength to, to, to eulogize his daughter? How did you have the strength? So, so he said... He, he said that his daughter was, when she was sick, um, she was very, she was dying. It was a few days before she was dying. And she had, she was hooked up to all these machines. And, and she was totally, totally, like, had no strength to move, to do anything. To, she couldn't, she could barely talk. And she, she, uh, way, she, she, um, God, you know, she somehow got her, his wife, meaning her mother, to tell her, I want to call my friend. One of her friends was in Florida running a marathon uh, for High Lifeline or for one of these organizations for her, for Miriam, was running, you know, uh, this was two days before she died. She couldn't even talk. She couldn't move. She couldn't do anything. But she picked up the, she said she wanted to call her friend, and she she uh, got on the phone, FaceTimed her. She had no strength to do anything. And she said, she said, go, I think her name was Adina, you know, go Adina. What, she could barely talk. She's like, go Adina, go. Like she mu mustered up her strength on, you know, a few days before she died. And Glenn told me, Zelig told me, my friend told me, he said, he said from the day that she was, you know, uh, uh, you know, diagnosed and she went through whatever she went through, she like, she had, she, even though things were hard for her, she pushed through and she, she you know, was kaivish herself. You know, when a person realizes that, that, that life is short and, and we're here for a true purpose and we're here on this world not to just, you know, look for the next best uh, enjoyment. And again, it's okay. I'm not worried about anyone not having enjoyment. You're going to eat your sushi. You're going to have your Starbucks coffee. You're going to have your nice car. You know, I was already thinking this morning, let, let me finish the story and then I'll go back to it. So Zelig said, so Glenn said when he was Mospit, his daughter, so he had in mind, you know, pushing against the grain and going against your fears. You know what I mean? That's, that's really what life is about. That's what life is about. And like I said yesterday, like I said yesterday, it's not a contradiction. You know, people think, remind me to go to the car because I had this good horror about the car and comfort. We'll, we'll get back to it. But, but, you know, people think that, that there are two ways to, to live. You either, you either, I call it white knuckle, or you uh, soldier through it, but you don't deal with your emotions. Like we said yesterday, it's not a contradiction. It's not a contradiction to push through things and also to deal with your emotions. People think it's either or. Either I'm going to be this emotional guy who's getting in touch with my emotions and I'm going to sleep all day, or I'll be this guy who's soldiering through everything and I'm not in touch with my emotions. That's not, that, that, those are two extremes. The, go, the goal is you push through, you go against your grain, you go against and you work on yourself to fix yourself, and you also try and deal with your emotions, so you become, you know, a shlemistic person. That's that's what it's about. It's not either or. People associate being in touch with your emotions about falling apart, and not in touch with my emotions. You know, just pushing everything through. 
you know, I was thinking when I was in, when I was in America, so uh, I was driven around uh, only in Teslas, right? I was like to hang out in Teslas the whole time. And a Tesla is like a computer. So what do you do? And, and it's not just Teslas. I think it's other cars also where you can access it. I don't know, you guys tell me. You could access it with your phone. They have apps that you access your phone. You could turn it on. So like, te- right? Mordechai, yeah? We, yeah you. Most cars, right. See, Mordechai knows, right. You don't even, it doesn't even, Basically every car, right, exactly. Welcome to 2000, 2023. You don't need a key. Blah, blah, blah. You act, now, why do you access your car early? New and Mordechai tell us. Because it's cold outside. A chutzpah. I'm going to walk. The fact that I actually have to walk to my car and I have to stay in my, oh, Shlaim is getting excited, right, also. You have to walk in your car when it's cold outside and then I'm going to actually have to turn on the heat and wait I have to wait 10 minutes till it gets warm? What are you, crazy? So this way, while I'm in the shower, taking a steam, hot, boiling shower, where I got the heat pumping in my room, so I can access, right, I can tell Siri to go make sure my car is at 78 degrees with the seat warmers. Avada. So I was frustrated. Today was a little colder, and I heard the winds going on, and I'm like, I'm like, I gotta get myself a, a, an app to be at a right now. Now that's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Everyone should be zocha to be able to have the heat warmers, and your seat should be very warm when you get in the car, and the air and the heat should be blowing, and it should be very. Right? You know what I mean? This is uh, they don't have that in Ashdod yet. Give them a couple years. In a couple years, they'll have it in Eretz Yisrael also. But what's my point? My point is there's nothing wrong with that. Mordechai, there's nothing wrong. Mordechai, right? Mordechai, right? Lakewood, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having a lot of sushi. There's nothing wrong with having seat warmers. There's nothing wrong with having that. That's the world we live in. But that's not the purpose of the world. That's not, Hashem didn't put you down this world for that. That will help you to do chesed. That will help you to be kovish yourself, to work on yourself. The challenge that comes with that is that when we learn to be all comfortable with everything and everything is all about comfort, so the second I have an uncomfortable conversation, I run the other way. That's, that's the challenge with it. Okay, question, comments? I'm gonna make my shahakal, and then uh, we'll talk a little about Lush and Hara. But let's hear a co- question, comments. There's gotta be question, comments on that one, on that whole thing. Yes, who's questioning, commenting? Shuki, come on. It's got to be something, someone, yes. That's it. That's so clear. So it's Menachem, come on. Man, I don't want to, don't, 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 come on. Oh, uh, yes. Daniel. Oh, uh, here we go. I had a little bit of a question about money. Yes. If we do go out one day and decide to make money. A lot of money. I'm giving you a bracha. Daniel, everyone, please say amen. Daniel, you're going to have so much money. You're going to be a multi-gazillionaire worth tens, 20 million dollars. Amen. Okay, now ask your question. Now that we got that out of the, now that we got that out of the way, now ask your question. What's your question? Make a lot of money, Daniel. Make a, make a lot of money, have a comfortable life, have a big house, have a big den. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I promise I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not being facetious. I'm, I'm, I'm really being honest. I hope you have a luxurious, beautiful house, okay? I, I mean that, but, but, well, not but, and... More importantly, I hope you have the most amazing relationship with your wife and you have an incredible relationship with your wife and your children and you give a lot to your community and you work on yourself, you work in, you get up early, you exercise, you learn, you, you connect a lot to Hashem, you're, you're a person who doesn't speak Lush and Hara, all, all of that. There's nothing wrong, but I'm saying, what's harder to have a beautiful house 
and to have a comfortable bed and to have an app. I mean, Mordechai, how old are you, Mordechai? 19 years old. At 19 years old, he's got an app for the Tesla or whatever he's got. Shkoyach, so big deal. You have a Tesla? Sorry to hear that. Come on, Mordechai, you got it. I'm not sorry for myself. Why? why? Okay, good, see, see? Either. But what's the shot? The shot is there's nothing, there's, nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with having that. He's 19 years old. You could be, tw- you could be 20 years old and have, and have money in this and that. But, that, but that, that's not the purpose of the, the world. That's not why you're put in this world. You're put in this world to help people. You're put in this world to better yourself. That, that, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I was asking like, the proper mentality of what we should look at. How should we look at proper? Right. Enjoy it. And say, thank you, Hashem that I have a beautiful coffee. Thank you, Hashem, that I have a beautiful car. Thank you, Hashem, that I have a... Thank you, Hashem, that, I, that I'm alive and I can walk and I can, and I can enjoy. And we live in 2023 and we're not waiting online for, for a piece of bread. Thank God. Great. But therefore, now what? Now, beautiful. Now, let's get moving. Now, let's go help somebody else who is less fortunate than me. Now let me work on myself, on my anger problems, on my laziness problems, on my tithes. That's the perspective. Enjoy it, but don't forget what you're here on this world for, because we're all going to die one day. We're all going to be dead one day. So what, what are you going to bring? What? Mashiach. Mashiach. Well, even when Mashiach, you die. Yeah. Olam Haba is different. Olam Haba is afterwards. But people die. Yeah, sorry to ruin. I mean, no one knows exactly, but m- most people say that Mashiach, Ain Bain, right? You might say Mashiach, right? There's, there's, there's not so many differences between Mashiach. Now just there'll be a scholar of Hashem, but whatever. They'll, they'll, we're not getting into that sheer now. The point is, the point is, you're going to live forever. Olam Haba. Olam Haba. But what are you going to, but what, what, who are you? That's the question. The question is, who are you? No one writes, yes, Chacham Tawil, Araf Tawil. I just want to, um, <laughs> Shiva always speaks about being mindful, and um, I'm realizing what you have. I was driving, just recently, and talked about having a the car, and this and that, and, and, and what you're saying is that, how am I supposed to look at it? I was driving up, and it was pouring, 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 and I was in my comfortable, warmed up car, and I drove past a uh, a bus station, and you see all the people who are standing there waiting for the bus, right? I stopped my car, and I just sat for two minutes, and I thanked the Ramon that I have a car, and why do I have a car? What, like, why, why do I have the bra that I have in my life? Why am? Why was I so fit? Instead of looking at it as <coughs> driving by and not realizing what the good that you have in your life, so a little bit of yeah, how am I supposed to approach the things that I have in my life? I was supposed to be humbled by the fact that I was given the things that I have. And I'm so grateful and I, I, I have to thank Yoshia because every time that they drive up over here, I have a new thing that I try to do is I drive up the road and I say thank you to Hashem for all the different things that I have in my life. There's a one time, right? I got that from the Shiva of Hashem who taught me that. And I'm here at Harvey right? And my friend, right? But, but every time I drive up here, I try to make sure that I'm thankful for those things. Thank you, Hashem. Beautiful. Beautiful. And and thank you, Rabbi the wheel. And and oh, yeah. So that 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 right. That that's what I was gonna say to piggyback on what Rabbi the is saying is that is that Hashem and this Masil Sharm brings down when it comes to um, Anava, when it comes to being humble, is that the reason Hashem gave you Chachma, the reason Hashem gave you anything, is to share with other people. Nothing that Hashem gave you is to keep for yourself. The only reason Hashem gave you anything, He gave you wisdom, help somebody else. He gave you money, share that money with somebody else. He gave you an experience that you went through, help somebody else who also goes through that experience. Nothing in this world is given 
for us to keep for ourselves. Everything that Hashem gives us is to share with people who don't have what we have. It's not just for us to keep it for ourselves to say, oh, I'm better than you, I have more than you. So that's, so that's what it's about. That's, that's, that's really what it's about. And it's challenging, to be honest. It is challenging because the natural thing is that, is that what, the more you have, the more a person can fall into his ego. And then you could start saying, oh, I want to keep this for myself. And, I, and, 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 it, and it becomes more difficult. It is a big challenge that people have. But that's why we have to learn Musr. That's why we have to learn Hilchus Lashon Hara. That's why we have to come. I mean, Rav Hillel comes over to me this morning and is complaining, not complaining, but saying, oh, the shear, you know, we, 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 the shear is a little bit shorter now. Like, we're just getting started. You know, that, that to me says, here's a person who's, who's a, a grown man, married with children, in a shear, working on himself, and he wants to work on himself more and more and more. That's, that's what we want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, Rabbi Alexander, he's not just sitting here because he has no other place to sit. Maybe, but I don't think so. Rabbi Alexander is Kenai Nahara, a, a old, yeah? Oh, okay, I thought you were going to say something. Rabbi Alexander is sitting here, why? Because that's... Okay, good, please go. That's the purpose of life, guys. Rabbi Alexander, ask him. He's Rabbi Zimmerman's father-in-law. Ask him, ask him, why are you sitting here? Because you, you, right, go retire. No, retirement is not for a Jew. You might retire from your job, but, but you don't retire from your real job. Your real job is not what you do for a living. It's how you're living your life. Everybody wants to know, oh, what does this guy do for a living? Not how am I living my life. Am I working on myself? Am I changing myself? Am I bettering myself? Yes, Rabbi Alexander. You said you were waiting for me to finish. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The boys are trying to grow. It's very inspiring to me. It gives me to make my retirement years even more productive than before. Unbelievable. 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 It's unbelievable. 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 I wish all the boys here would reach my age and give us a chef and feel the same way. Amen. 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 I, I, and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you where the Musr comes to us, guys. The Musr comes to us is because it's not how old you are. Because you could be 18 years old, 20 years old, 17 years old, 23 years old, and you're an old man already. You're an old man, you're lazy, you're, uh, um, uh, and you need a cane. You need a walker to walk around. You need your heat blasting. You ever walk into like an old person's house and it's like so hot and it's like warm. It's like, ugh. Right? You go into a guy puts on his air conditioner on 16 and the heat, the heat's on 29 or 35 the entire time where it's roasting in there. I'm talking about myself. Right? That, uh, right? that mentality of, of, of totally being like in a cocoon, always in a cocoon. And okay, it's 2023. We have our nasirinas. But to push your limits. And I want to be, uh, again, Yona, and then we'll get to you Right? It's not a contradiction to push your limits and to work on your emotions. Don't mix that up. They, they're one and the same. Pushing yourself and white knuckling and soldiering through, is, everyone needs to do that to some degree. Working on your emotional internal stuff, everybody has to work on that as well. They go hand in hand. Nowadays you can't do it. It used to be old school, they didn't have to deal with the... Uh, with the, maybe they had to deal with it. They didn't deal with the emotional stuff. No one did the emotional stuff. They were trying to just survive, whatever it was. It doesn't matter. But it's not like that anymore. It used to be you just, you, you just, you just do. You don't talk about love and emotions and all the touchy-feely and all that stuff. Our generation, we get both. We talk about all the feely stuff and all the emotional stuff, and we have to push ourselves through. Yes, Yona, you'll wrap it up. Sorry, Ravillo. Uh, Sorry for all of us. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Ago. Yeah. And it was so funny because I went to a retirement home to do like a visit. Not uh, my grandparents, but another one of my friend's grandparents. And I was so interested to see that there were so many elderly people that just finished with life pretty much. And 
Not doing it, just right. like sitting there bored, and then I come into the base straight back. And Rev Alexander was sitting here, truly. Like, it's really, I used to know the Rev Alexander as well. Mine is shot as well, like, you know, like not messing about the room. It's inspiring to come back and realize that, like, it's funny how we have this whole thing about you finish work at 65 and you're done. And right. then you then get to sit back in your old chair and see some grandkids and do nothing. You know? And that's, and then you open a book here and there, and you've done this. Right. Like, it's inspiring to come back here and speak like, up in the morning. Right. And work on themselves. Just, exactly. It doesn't happen. Like, in, my, in my world, it doesn't happen. So right. in, the whole, in the world, it doesn't. Correct. Right. Right. Amazing. Amazing. Go. Oh. Thank you, Ona. And I and I want to and I want to say something. It doesn't begin when you're 70 years old. It doesn't begin when you're 50 years old. It doesn't begin when you're 40 years old. It begins when you're 18 years old. Because the mentality is this is zechar bayracha. Remember God when you're young. Remember what life is about when you're young. When you're young. Because this is the time where you're planting, right? It's a, it's a good, uh, good for two bishva. This is when you're planting, you're planting who you are. Your roots are going deep into the ground now to build yourself who you are. If you're waiting till you're an old man to be a young man, it's not gonna work like that. When you're young, you gotta try as best as you can. That's why the Yates Sahara is the strongest when you're 18, 19, 20. It's very, very powerful, the Yates Sahara. But you gotta fight, you gotta fight, you have that call also. Okay, we're gonna wrap up. Sorry, Hashem, yeah, 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 go quick, because we gotta wrap up. Two Bishvat, it's Rosh Hashanah, right. We don't have time to talk about it so much, but let, let right, it's, okay. it's, I can't say Pachot Yuter. It's, it's a, Tu B'Shvat is a very holy time. It's a time where um, you can daven, as the Bnei Yisachar says, to daven for an Esrug. And I always say, what's the Pshat to daven for an Esrug? The Esrug represents your heart. That's what the Medr says. The Esrug represents your heart. So daven to have Lev Tahar Bereli Elokim. Daven that you should have a good a good heart, a, a pure heart, and a heart that's strong to get you through all your challenges. And don't worry about your past, because the way to fix your past is through today. And don't worry about your future, because the best thing you can do for your future is today. Have an amazing